Hello, minasan, konnichiwa. Uh, my name is Keiko. Uh, I'm a pro uh, Japanese lecturer in Okayama University here. So today we're gonna start in the survival Japanese course. Hi, Ja Minasan, Kyoa, Yoroshiko Negai Shimas. はい。So, uh, this one, this is today is the first day of this course. So, today lesson one will be learning about uh, greetings. But before for that, uh, we we are learn, uh, just I I want to start it as, as an introduction. How to how going to on this course? I want to explain. So, okay. Hi, Minasan, welcome to Wakayama University. This is the view of the Wakayama University. So it's uh, we are located on the top of the mountain, and uh, they are very um. Little bit huge, yes, yeah. not, not so huge compared to other, other universities, but uh, uh, we are only on the, uh, we, we are located on the top of the mountain and then uh, uh, very, uh, we have a nice view of the uh, Wakayama city in here. So, uh, what we gonna be do today is, so okay. Um, oh. So uh, this survival course will be um, the target is the basic beginner, basic beginner. So uh, this course uh, uh, based on A1 level, which is the uh, JF, JF Tadan, JS standard for Japanese language education from by uh, Japan Foundation in Japan. So uh, we gonna learning about the totally A1 level. The the goal is can understand and use familiar everyday expression and very basic phrase aimed at the satisfaction of needs of the content concrete text. And can introduce yours, but yourself and others, and can ask and answer questions about personal details, such as where you live, uh, people you know, or things you have. So, uh, also can inter interact a simple way, provide the other person talk slowly and clearly, and uh, is prepared to help. So, um, today we're gonna learning about uh, only by me, only myself, or only, only the lecture. But tomorrow and after tomorrow, we're gonna speaking with uh, our students. Um, so let's enjoy your conversation in Japanese or any common language. So, um, So this course object, uh, this survival Japanese objectives is to understanding and exchange and communication is the uh, keywords. So learn about Japanese culture and the Jap Japanese language and the people who live in Japan. And also interact with people from uh, other countries like you are, you are so uh, with similar similar who, who has similar interests and then communicate about their own things. So tell, tell about your things to the others. So the, these are objective is uh, most main, main point on this course. So please uh, talk about yours to us. Hi, and then uh, this course, we have uh, four days. So we're gonna learning about these three topics. The first today, we're gonna learning about Nihongo, that means Japanese. Um, 
And also uh, tomorrow we're going to learn about myself or uh, about myself or around the people or uh, around yours. And then topic three with tabemono. It's food or uh, food or dishes or drinks or any kind of uh, things about food. So these are three topics going on to, for today and tomorrow, after tomorrow. So, so today we are, uh, okay. So then um, each, each activity is having a goal. And then today, uh, today, uh, today to uh, today is Tuesday. So Tuesday to Friday, we're gonna have our five main goals we have. So today, first one is Nihongo, uh, Japanese. We the goal is exchange greetings. So we are exchange greetings with Japanese or teach your country's language, and then exchange the greetings with the language. Use language, common language. And then tomorrow we will we we gonna uh, doing about myself. So. Uh, they have uh, two goals. One is give a simple self introduction. So uh, we, the, tomorrow we are uh, try to give a self introduction in Japanese using, and then also uh, talk briefly about your family. And, and I I want to hear about your family or your 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 things or your country about and talk briefly about your family uh, or your things in Japanese. And then um, Thursday, Thursday we'll be learning about tabemono. Uh, everyone likes food, right? So um, many things like Japanese, not only for the Japanese food, like your country's food or anything like that. So uh, talking about variety of things about so the, throwing the food or something like that. Okay, so these are goals for this course each day. So uh, our schedule um, again. Uh, we are today we are gonna doing the Nihongo, uh, doing the Japanese uh, greetings with simple phrase using simple phrase, and then tomorrow we are topic about watashi, myself. So self introduction, talk about your family with the groups with uh, yours and then our students. And then uh, Thursday will be tabemono, so food, a favorite food or dishes or something like offering drink or order food or something like through a conversation. Uh, as doing a conversation through something about food. And then uh, Friday will be review. So talk about the, what you have learned in this program, not only for Japanese course, through, the, through all the programs, what you have done, uh, you have learned. So uh, share your idea or share your expression, uh, impression of, about this course. Okay, then. Uh, mainly this course, uh, this class, Japanese survival Japanese lesson, will be like this, this uh, structure. So main first, I'm gonna do a lecture about something like the topics. Then after that, uh, uh, next, making a into a divided group, maybe one to 10 or one group, each group, maybe 10 people or something like that. The, I divided the groups and then uh, doing the composition uh, in the each, each other uh, during the breakout room session. And then after that, uh, back to the here and then uh, next lecture starting. And then after that, uh, break session. So like this way, I will be doing the, this course to, uh, through three days. Okay. Today is the first day, so we can't do maybe two lectures. So maybe here and here, I, I guess this one is, will be 
it'll finish um, until 4 p.m. So. Um, I, okay, just uh, calm down. <laughs> I'm just a little bit nervous and then now just, uh, I need a uh, calm down time. So I can see all your face now. So I just wanted to know, uh, this is first time to learning Japanese. Anybody? No? No one? You already know some Japanese or... Uh, and how? Xiao Ji san? Xiao Ji san, you were first time for learning Japanese? Uh, not no the first time. Mm -hmm. So uh, already you know. Oh, more. More. Okay. No mm -hmm. So um, I think. Uh, uh, some of them can speak Japanese through, uh, smoothly, but some of them might be not. So um, this one, this course, the main is communication. So uh, when you make, when you into a groups, uh, try to talk a lot with other person, and then um, how, how, how can I say, uh, make or uh, thinking about the others. So uh, using the, of course you can use Japanese and also English or any common language. What is important is to know each other. So don't uh, stick, stick about, I have to use Japanese, I have to learn Japanese, I have, I have to speak English or like that. Uh, please like take relax and <laughs> try to uh, just enjoy your conversation about during this Zoom class. Okay, so that's that is for me the message. Okay, so thank you. So back to the classes. Modorimas. Ah, uh, hi. So we are gonna do like this way. Um, each of so this course is only one one hour. So maybe um I and then I want to important to the time for make conversation session. So. Um, next lecture was only 20 minutes or less than like that. And then after that, uh, the conversation session will be, will be half an hour or 40 minutes or 20 minutes. And I want to use a lot of conversation time with you and your, your classmates or our university students. Okay? So about conversation time, uh, why I want to like repeat it like this way. Uh, the, in Japanese, we have uh, words, ichigo, ichie. That means once in a lifetime meeting. So this is the mean we are now here to attending the class summer program. This is kind of the ichigo ichie. So, what is important is communicate to uh, uh, communicate to each other. So, what important with our this this Japanese survival course is using the simple phrase, uh, use simple phrase, and then time management for everyone can speak, and then common language, uh, not the sticking to use Japanese or English or. Anything we have, we have a camera, so we don't use anything like without words, we can communicate using the camera. So uh, using common language. So and then this vector, this vector, uh, not talking only um, if only one person talking to 20 minutes, it's not like communication. So please uh, respect each other. Uh, consider the other person or thinking about other person, uh, respect is important. And then also uh, the most important, most important thing is communication to enjoy conversation. And then maybe your maybe future classmate in here, Wakayama University Asia. So that's why uh, we can, you can, uh, discuss, uh, uh, share your ideas, or you can communicate. You are a university student, and it's through the communication 
uh, you you can know about Japan or Japanese culture more. So please let's enjoy this uh, conversation time. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, okay, fine. Hi, just starting for today's tema, topics. Nihongo, Nihongo. Nihongo is Japanese language, so exchange greetings or names. It's very really easy, easy, but um, just try to um, using the Japanese greetings. Uh, normally, maybe you don't have chance to use like uh, the Japanese greetings, yeah. So uh, today we, we can use a lot and then exchange the other people with using these expressions. Okay. So um, I just want to hear about your countries. So what do you do when you meet when you first meeting or when you meet someone? What do you do you do? What do people do in Japan? So how do you say these occasions in Japanese? Anyone? Anyone please? How do you say these occasions? How how in Japanese? What do you say? For example, um how about this one? These guys shaking hands. So how do you say in Japanese in these occasions? よろしくお願いします。こんにちは。こんにちは。はい、こんにちは。こんにちは。はい、こんにちは。こんにちは。はい、こんにちは。こんにちは。はい、こんにちは。こんにちは。こんにちは。こんにちは。こんにちは。こ
Is that that? You say your name, you introduce mm -hmm. your name. Yeah, 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 yeah. So please, 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 so that I can say. Uh, watashi wa name desu. Mm. So, ne? Yes, that's right. Hajime washite, Keiko desu. Dozo yoroshiku. For example, my name is Keiko. So, um, hajime washite, Keiko desu. Dozo yoroshiku. This is the basic uh, introduction when we meet first time, ne? So, breathing expression, uh, you already know that there are many kind of styles we have. So, um, this is quickly we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna through, uh, but uh, already maybe you know, but you, we just quickly starting to uh, uh, explain. Uh, ohayou gozaimasu, ohayou gozaimasu. When we use ohayou gozaimasu, when we use, in the morning. Hmm, in the morning. In the morning when we meet the in the morning, during the morning, or oh, using Ohio Gozaimas. But you know we have uh, using Ohio Gozaimas it when it's not in the morning. Even in the night, we 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 sometimes use Ohio Gozaimas. Do you know when? Yes, or... when we first meet someone in one day. In one day? Yes. Uh, not uh, not only in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, it, uh, it's okay. Because I meet someone uh, this day. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. anytime is okay. Ah, business? You said business? Uh, hmm? Yeah, it, uh, yes, I, I didn't hear you clearly. Ah, okay. So, um, I mean, uh, ohayou gozaimasu. When we uh, at the office or when we are uh, working on the business, uh, when we meet the co-worker, colleague, um, when we always ohayou gozaimasu. Even it's in the night or it's even in the afternoon or it's in the not uh, it's not in the morning uh, when we meet first time in this in that day in the first time when we meet the with Polly we say oh hi so mm, yes uh, maybe uh, Shia -san, Shia -san wants to say like that huh? so uh, we use oh hi normally in the morning but when you we working at the office when you the business occasion we you use Ohio Gozaimas. But the uh, point is that uh, the note is that this is only for co worker, colleague, not like the other, other company person, uh, only the uh, co worker, colleague using the, these Ohio Gozaimas. Then, uh, number two, Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Now it's 3 p.m. we have in Japan. Uh, so we use Konnichiwa. Uh, how about Uzbekistan? How about Uzbekistan? Now it's Konnichiwa. How? Uh, sorry. Uh, Uzbekistan, what time uh, is that? I think Konnichiwa will be in our country. Assalamu alaikum. Um, like yes, the yeah, same as previous one. Ah, what time is that now? Uzbekistan. Yeah, she must say. Eleven thirty. It will be like good morning still. Morning. So maybe you are Ohayou gozaimasu, eh? Yeah. Hi. Ohayou okay. <laughs> gozaimasu. Okay. Ohayou <laughs> gozaimasu. Is there any country konbanwa? No. No? In the, in the night. In the night. Konbanwa. Is there any country konbanwa? No. After that, now. No? Maybe Brazil. Brazil, yesterday, we, I, had, I saw the chat there at 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, that's right. So maybe, uh, but we didn't say early morning, ohayou gozaimasu, to be 2 a.m. Mm. 
even konbanwa also we didn't say if i met the person in the middle of the night how do i say 2 a.m just just maybe bow or something like that because it's very surprised if a uh, 2 to 2 a.m i met to someone so this is the, that's why so this is the very common rank common useful expression hi then uh, sayonara and jamata then um this is osaki ni shitsure shimasu otsukare sama deshita this is also occasion in the business business so when you leave somewhere uh, leave, leave to office i say osaki ni shitsure shimasu that's mean i'm a con And then, otsukare sama deshita. Mm, see you tomorrow, the plane. No, otsukare sama deshita. Then, uh, okay, yeah, we just try to say, uh, we just, we gonna show the uh, video about the each occasions uh, for each occasions video. We gonna show, watch. All right. Okay, so, uh, okay, so we're gonna be see the video about uh, these greeting occasions. Can you see the video now? The okay, it must. おはようございます。おはようございます。ああ。こんにちは。こんにちは。こんばんは。こんばんは。こんばんは。こんばんは。ありがとうございました。さようなら。はい、さようなら。Hi, these are the occasions for when we when we are uh, doing the greetings. Uh, so then um so um these are occasions for greeting the expressions. So each Uh, morning, noon, night, or any occasions at the office, we use these expressions. Then, next one. Uh, thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. And then, iye. Uh, iye, doitashimashite. Iye. 
So these are sumimasen and uh, iie, not uh, use, using expressions. Isne? So six, arigato gozaimasu. Seven, sumimasen. These are the uh, same meaning with thank you, sumimasen. That meaning, thank you. And then uh, eight, uh, number eight, uh, when he late, time late, and uh, I'm sorry, sorry, no, sumimasen, sumimasen. And then, yeah, uh, a little bit angry, but yeah, not, no, not you, not, uh, no, uh, how, how, how do you say, no, no, doesn't care, uh, doesn't care, or something like that. Yeah, but a little bit angry. So. Uh, then nine, number nine is called to the waiter, sumimasen, sumimasen. And then, hi, uh, here you are. No, hi. So these are same sumimasen, but different use, different occasion. すみません。ごめんなさい。オッケー。え、グリーティングエクスプレッション。あ、アイエクスプレインアバウトすみません。で、すみません。でーイズアメニーすみません。ミーニングオブすみません。ナンバー6。あ、ナンバー7のすみません
。OK、so B がすみませんね。Anybody doing the thank you すみません。Could you, doing, could you do me a favor? Is anybody doing the role of、uh, thank you すみません。Anybody? いませんか ?No one? I gonna ask to ビヌス大学の RDS ジョルディ・ホサルさん。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。あの,あのハンカチ落としましたよ。ハンカチ落としましたよ。いえ。はい、およ<笑>はい,い,いあ。あるあるディさんはこの男の人です。ディスがね。そう、ユジャッセイ、サンキューのすみませんを、ジャッセイ、ウィズダビデオね。オッケー。はい。いきますよ。ドラゲン。はい あの。ハンカチ落としましたよ。はい、すみません。オッケー、センキュー。はい、すみません。はい、センキューのすみませんですね。じゃあ、次のすみませんは。ネクストワン。ウィルビー。ああ、トゥレディス。Coming to two ladies, King and then two ladies, sorry, no, すみませんですね。So two ladies, sorry, 誰にしようかな。Anybody know? Anybody, anyone? No? ああ、ちょっと待って。じゃあ、UGM のフィナンジャ、フィナンディアさん。いや、先生。はい、フィナンディアさんが、えー、っと、A、A さん、A さんね。あ、ごめん。あ、なわ、そう。UWED、マフ、マフツナさん。はい、はい。はい、じゃあ、マフツナさん、B、アズイン B。OK? わかりました。はい、じゃあ、頑張って。いきます。すみません。すみません。すみません。OK、はい、いいですよ。ありがとうございます。Thank you。So this one is perdon のすみませんですね。ペルドネのすみません。In the last、はい、asking すみません。Uh, excuse me, no, すみませんです。So, anyway, uh, キチさん、キチさん、あ、uh, まず、ま、ま、む、むざぱさんとキチさんあげてます。So, two, two times I pray, ね。So, the first, じゃあ、むず、むざぱさんお願いします。Okay. で、second, キチさんお願いします。ちょっと待ってね。はい、はい、先生。はい。ちょっと待ってね。どっちがどっちだ。すみませんを言うのはどっちだ。ええ。いきます。あ、ちょっと待ってな、ムズハさん。Now we go, I start. はい、どうぞ。すみません。はい。教室は。あ,あれ<笑>まあ、OK でしょ。<笑> OK でしょ。ありがとう。はい、じゃあ、キチさん。<笑>キチさんもう一回お願いします。はいはい、キチさん、アスキング。すみません。はい。はい。教室は。はい、以上です。<笑>キチさん、doing the both role ですね。A さん、B さん、both role。ありがとう。Thank you. はい。So, how different?、Um, uh, 
。Thank you のありが,あありがとうじゃない。<笑> Thank you のすみません。And then sorry のすみません。And then excuse me のすみません。How different? How different? What do you think? The intonation? Mm. Intonation. How different to the intonation? How different? Intonation different. Yes, of course. How different? Oh, accent. Hmm? Accent. 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 How? So, accent different. Mm. How different? I think when we want to say, like, excuse me, the mm. sumimasen would be a little bit longer. Like, mm -hmm. sumimasen, mm. like that. Mm -hmm. Then? And, and we want to say sorry, it would be more rapid to say, like, sumimasen. Mm. Like that. Um, yeah, Thank maybe you. that's for me. Oh, that's all. Okay. Yeah. How about gesture or anything? Not only the words, the intonation, pronunciation. How about? the face and then gesture, something like that. Sorry, no sumimasen, sumimasen. Thank you, no sumimasen, sumimasen. Excuse me, no sumimasen, sumimasen. Like uh, using the, not only the pronunciation, intonation, using the all the gesture, including uh, expression, greetings. So greetings, uh, expression that mean not only the words uh, with uh, faces, uh, gestures, anything, any of using, uh, anything to using and express to your feeling like to, to other person. Hi. ということで greetings でした。じゃあちょっと待ってね。Okay. Ah,、uh, I gonna back to the. もう四十二分やな。Okay. それで、えー、と、uh, I just want to know,、uh, using, can you attending, or maybe of course you already know to how to use Zoom ですね。So could you tell me anyone who doesn't know about 日本語の字、uh, キャラクター、ひらがな、カタカナ、漢字 ？Anyone, anyone? No, doesn't know about Japanese. Ah, okay. Some of people、uh, is there, ne? Okay. So, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. We, this course is not learning about Japanese characters, just communication using the Japanese simple phrase and communicate to other people. Don't worry, don't worry. Okay. Ah, just wait. So, just、so, wait. Today, for me, it's practice time to using Zoom. This is just a minute. Okay, so, the, the, so uh, uh, next session will be the conversation time. Just a minute. I want to bring the time. So,、uh, before for break session 10,、uh, life and culture names.、Mm, we're gonna talk about the names. So, how do you address to other people? So, when we Japanese,、uh, in Japan, when we call to other person, we have addressed something the, uh, using, uh, using other words, address, and then call to people. So, For example, this is a baby, a girl,、uh, um, I, we call Chan using Chan, Mao Chan. Her name is Mao, but we use Chan. Chan means like cute, kawaii. So, and then, then we call to some other people, like customer or some business person, then you call to use Sama, Sama,、uh, Suzuki, Sama. And then、uh, normally we call to the other person using san, matsushita san, matsushita san. And then、uh, the friends, friends、uh, call to only、uh, the name, family name, family name, Ishikawa, Ishikawa. We don't use chan or kun or san anymore, just Ishikawa. 
And then uh, when called to um, the guys or boys, uh, Takashi kun, Takashi kun. Uh, on the lady son. So we use the uh, aggressed person uh, when we call to uh, the other person. So how about your country? Uh, your country use, use something like any something's address, the name something, do you use special words in your country? How about? No, just call the name and then when you call just calling only the using the name, which do you use normally? Uh, surname, uh, family name or name? We normally using the family name, Matsushita-san. My name is Matsushita. So any, anyone call to Matsushita-san, Matsushita-san. And close to, close friends call to Keiko, Keiko-san, Keiko-san, Keiko-san. Or family, we call Keiko-chan. But normally we use family name and commonly. So how about your country, uh, which you use? Uh, in Thailand, uh, usually call family name. Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. Usually call first name. Name. Ah, so this car. Yeah. Uh, and if you know someone, if you know nickname of someone, uh, you call nickname. Mm. Okay. Uh, becoming a close friend, uh, also this call. Hi. Just call her name is okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, not only close friend, if you are your friend in your office and you close to you, don't know, don't all friend or uh, little. <laughs> mm. We used to call nickname. Nickname. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. If, so, if you if you are close up, mm. you can call nickname. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this name. When so uh, in Japan also first time we call family name. San, nani nani san, family name san san. But when you becoming the getting close close to change to the name and then nickname nickname. So uh, from now we're gonna uh, Venus no Mashu san. Okay, um, excuse me, uh, Miss Matsushita san. Hmm. Uh, in Indonesia, we usually call names that are given to us like when we are aisatsu. Hmm. Like, and then when we are close, it's not a name anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. Just nickname. Hey, like, hey, toka, uh, oi, asoikoto. Different, different nickname. <laughs> different fun. nickname, or no? Yes. Hey, hey. Oh, how recognize? Um, no. Hey, hey. Call to me, call me. How recognize? Eh, so no, Okay, I see. Hi. In Japan, only Japan is Only Japan is there? Only Japan we using chan, san, sama, kun, san, chan like using like the, these expressions. The, in uh, Indonesia, mm -hmm. the honorifics is in the front. So if I want to say, if I speak in Japanese, it's mm -hmm. Matsushita-san or mm -hmm. Matsushita-sensei, but mm -hmm. in Indonesia, it's Bu Matsushita. Ah, book, book, ne, guru to ka book to ne. Ah, naruhodo. Okay, is that only for like teacher or like present or like, like, like that? Boss or just no. Um, who is start? for the? Uh, continue, continue. Oh. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, boo is for uh women only. If it's mm -hmm. a man, we use pa, and it's mostly for uh, you know, people in higher places than us. Oh. It's a formal greeting. Oh, okay, formal expressions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you. So, uh, differently than we, you are, you are, you are kind of also having the kind of these things, ne? Okay, Ari, arigatou gozaimasu. So, then the, we gonna see the video about the uh, surname, uh, name expressions. Okay, just a moment.
Oh, okay. Show you this slide. Um, hey, so uh, how do you say uh, use these expressions? Okay, the video. That's san desu. さん。はい、何ですか。すいません。ちょっとここがわからないんですけど、教えていただけますか。こうあの私はさん。上野です。上野さん。どうぞよろしくお願いします。こちらこそ。次はサマです。一名でお待ちの池谷様お待たせしましたご案内いたしますはい宮崎様はい本日の会計2000円になりますね 2000円ちょうどお預かりいたします。ありがとうございます。お預けてお大事に。はい、this is ちゃん、おいで。自転車貸してもらってたの。うん、自転車貸してあげてたの。うん。エリちゃん、おいで。おいで。はい。おいで。おら、エリちゃん。おら、おら。次は。くんです。かもとくん。ちょっと。はい。何でしょうか。この間のこのプレゼン良かったね、結果ね。ありがとうございます。ね、内藤くん。うん、何今度の日曜日暇うん。次は名前に何もつけないで呼ぶ場合です。渡辺はい今日俺のおごりやからじゃんじゃん飲もうありがとうございますおいどうでしたか乾杯乾杯はい so when we getting too close uh changing the uh name so uh so um also uh the other hand uh uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, um, uh, through uh, getting to um, uh, sometimes uh, we change the names, uh, changing to the names uh, when we uh, the growing. Kanke가変わると呼び方も変わります.ちょっと聞いてみましょう. こんにちは。こんにちは。お名前を教えてください。大立幸恵です。松本真理子です。お二人は会社の同僚ですか？はい。最初お互いをどう呼んでましたか？松本さんです。
大立さんです。今はどうですか？まっちゃんです。ゆきえさんです。なるほど。ありがとうございました。こんにちは。こんにちは。お名前を教えてください。はい。平島さやかです。山田のりえです。お子さんの幼稚園が同じなんですか？はい、そうです。最初お互いにどう呼ばれてましたか？と山田さんです。平島さんです。今はどうですか？とのんちゃんです。さやちゃんです。のんちゃん、さやちゃん。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございます。こんにちは。こんにちは。お名前を教えてください。久保美穂です。はるかです。お母さんは最初娘さんをどう呼んでましたか。はるちゃんです。今はどう呼んでますか。はい、中学生くらいの頃からはるかと呼ぶようになりました。そうですか。ありがとうございました。はい、あ、uh,、changing the name で、あ、uh,、changing the dependent depend on the okay、uh, relationship、uh,。あ、so this is the、uh, mainly、uh,、あ、はい、あ、these are Japanese styles of the あのはいでした。はい、now I I'm a little bit hurry because already fifty seven three two four ですから、OK。じゃあ、本当は、あ、we we gonna have a group session。we we we want、uh,、I want to have a group session activities but no time。so next tomorrow we gonna have After we,、uh, I started the lecture, few minutes, and then after that we, I, I,、uh, after that you are gonna be a group sessions. So、uh, this is the style of the tomorrow. So I just quickly showed to how to do. Can you can you show? Hi, and then、uh, like、uh, tomorrow. So this is the type of the how to starting breakout room. So、um, today, actually, I want to do the doing the self introduction, starting in Japanese, and then after that,、uh, using the English and then communicate to other person. But today, I see it seems like. Uh, no problem to using the Japanese. So tomorrow,、uh, you don't need to.、Um, uh, you you can use Japanese, or if you don't know our English words, also okay. So you just communicate to other person to using the、uh, any any language and communicate to other person. So uh, today uh, we are doing the Nihongo. So tomorrow we gonna do you doing watashi about myself. So what to do we got tomorrow? So tomorrow goal is give a simple self introduction. So and then second talk briefly about your family, and then、uh, number three tell someone about your family using a family photo. So、uh, you showing the your family photo, and then this is my. Mother, my family. My family is four people.、Uh, this is my father. This is my mother. Like that. Anything、uh, about you? About your showing,、uh, telling about your family or your thing. You you about you. Anything. So please prepare materials, photos or anything to introduce yourself or your family. So tomorrow will be gonna be. Mainly doing the conversation session, a conversation, a conversation. So, um, um,、uh, prepare about your something to showing about you. So, photo things, anything. Okay. So, showing about these things and then explain about your things in using Japanese or English or anything. 
So uh, tomorrow we'll be gonna be um, into 10 people, maybe groups, 10 groups, 10 people groups, and then talking each other. So uh, let's prepare, uh, uh, please prepare about these things tomorrow. Okay, hi. Then um, today we'll be finished uh, in this time, in this way. So minasan, uh, Today is for me first time to lecture, so uh, sorry about to uh, to uh, not 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 success <laughs> about uh, managing. But uh, please enjoy tomorrow. See you tomorrow again. So, ja, sayonara, mata imasho. Thank you very much. ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。疲れ様でした。疲れ様でした。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。Okay, good afternoon, good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Nicolas Program. I'm here a lecturer at the Center for uh, to research in Wakayama University. I see uh, that we have many, uh, many students from many countries, Serbia, Uzbekistan, Vietnam, even Brazil. That's pretty, pretty far away. I'm from Argentina, so I'm also from the same area. So well, uh, welcome to the summer program here in Wakayama University. I know that yesterday you have been uh, having a class with uh, Professor Joseph Cheer about uh, tourism and culture. He was explaining also about um, some about the Japanese culture. So today uh, I'm going to introduce more about the some of the locations, some of the uh, locations related to Wakayama history and culture. So you can have a better idea of um, how these concepts of culture, of tourism are applied, you know, here in local areas in Wakayama. And this is mostly based on my own research, really. I have been to all these areas uh, for many, many years. Uh, doing research, you know, taking other students, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I've been really there in many, in not really many, in all of the places I'm going to show you. Uh, so it's so also a way to, you know, to share some of my experiences uh, here in Wakayama, really, and also in Japan. So I will just uh, try to share the uh, slide here. We go here and here, and then we go you okay i hope everybody's seen the the slide so well let's refer my name is ricardo nicolas Prono. Uh, i'm originally from argentina and now a lecturer uh, at wakayama uh, the wakayama university the center for tourism research and my research is really about the uh, history and culture of uh wakayama right so i'm going to introduce two places today uh, and let me show you now the these places so first, I want to talk about this uh, Kumano Kodo. That is a very, very famous pyramid site here in Wakayama, visited not only by the domestic visitors, but also by uh, many international uh, visitors. It's very much related to the geography, the culture, the religion, the spiritual belief here in uh, Wakayama. And next up, we have a Koyas, that is a very, also a very famous, very well-known uh, Buddhist complex, also here in Wakayama. Uh, also very well known since it became a UNESCO site uh, around in 2004. And well, you will see through this, uh, through this site, through this example, you will see the, some of the richness of the traditions that Wakayama, Wakayama has. So first of all, I think that uh, uh, some of you are already familiar with uh, the geography maybe of uh, Wakayama or uh, Japan in general, I don't know. So, just going to do a very brief introduction of where is Wakayama in relation to other places in Japan. So you can see here above, we have here a uh, Wakayama prefecture. And you can see it's located in the south area of Kansai region. Kansai region, maybe you know it because it's the place where is Osaka and Kyoto. So you can see here in the map, we have Osaka prefecture, Kyoto prefecture, and in the south here, we have Wakayama prefecture. It's in the west side of Ki Peninsula. So the Kim Peninsula is this area you can see here. It's, we have Nara, Wakayama, and Mie prefectures here. And you can see that Wakayama is around the west side of the Kim Peninsula, right? The capital of Wakayama prefecture is Wakayama city. 
You can see it here in the north. This is where also the university is located. It's right here. It's a short around 30, 40 uh, minutes uh, train trip from Osaka International Airport here. Most of the international visitors now to Kansai, or Osaka, Kyoto, Sarikam using Kansai International Airport. Other cities include uh, Tanabe and uh, Hashimoto. It has around a population of, let's say, around uh, 1 million uh, in 2017, and is well known for its beautiful nature, agricultural products, and uh, spiritual heritage. And I think personally that uh, Wakayama uh, inside the Kansai region has be a very unique uh, and interesting culture a geography, nature to show that is very different from the some of the sites that they will see in Kyoto or in Osaka that are more urban areas. But here you have more regional culture with a better preserved a traditions, right? So moving on, again, why I chose these two places, Kumano Kodo and Koya Sanapar, but I've been uh, doing research in these two uh, spiritual sites here in Wakayama. They are perhaps uh, one of the two most representative and se all sacred sites in Japan, being visited for over 1,000 years. Actually, in Kumano Code, maybe it's even older. We don't know exactly when Kumano Code started. We know uh, how old is Koyasan. It's around 1,200 years. Kumano Kodo, uh, it's as old or and perhaps even older. And nowadays, as I mentioned before, they are both UNESCO sites since 2004, and also they continue to be visited by both Japanese and international uh, visitors, and also by researchers uh, from Japan and also elsewhere. So starting first with Kumano Kodo, I don't know if uh, some of you have heard about Kumano Kodo, or you know something about pilgrimage in Japan. Uh, as you know, uh, Japan has many uh, sacred sites, sacred mountains. You can see, for example, Fujisan, many of the temples in Kyoto, in Tokyo, so we have many temples, right? So uh, around Japan, in many places in Japan, you have sacred sites and pilgrimage sites, right? One of them, I think one of the oldest one probably is the uh, one we have here, Kumano Kodo. So I know you have heard about Kumano Kodo, but let's start first by saying, where is Kumano Kodo? Well, Kumano Kodo is actually the whole key peninsula, very interesting, it's very big, very, very big. So you can have here uh, the location of Kumano Kodo on the map. So you can see here a small circle. This is around, you will say, Kansai region, right? You can see here Osaka written here, right? And here you have uh, the map of Kumano Kodo, and you will see that it's really the same as the Ki Peninsula. You have here Osaka Prefecture, Nara Prefecture, Mie Prefecture, and Wakayama Prefecture over here. So you can see it spans through the whole uh, Ki Peninsula area, right? And you will see that it has many routes, many trails, and many sites uh, to go around. And you will see if you have seen, in comparison to perhaps a Western pilgrimage, it has actually there are many sites to visit. This is very interesting because usually in Western sites, in Western pilgrimage, there is only one place to go, and you go with the line, you go land, and then you come back, right? The Japanese experiments are a bit different in the sense that there are many places that you visit, and you go, in a sense, like you go around. Right, it's like a different type of uh, movement. So I will go just back and forth between to uh, the map and the explanation, so you have a better idea. So, like I said before, it's a pyramid circle located in Kim Peninsula, and it's centered around three main shrines that are called in Japanese Taisha. They are collectively known as the Kumano Sansan, the Kumano, the three mountains of Kumano, and they are dedicated to three uh, gods or deity of Kumano. They are called Kumano Gongen. We also identified with three uh, different Buddhas, and you can see the different mixture of uh, religions in Japan. So if we're back here, you will see it here in the map. Kumano Hayatama Taisha is one of the branch shrines. Kumano Nachi Taisha, and then we have the Kumano Hongu Taisha, right? They are located in these uh, spots here, right? So you have these three sites. Now, these three sites are uh, connected with three main uh, pyramid routes or trails. You have the Kiji route that is divided in Kohechi, Nakahechi, and Ohechi, Iseji, and Omine Okugaki, right? So if you go back here again, you will see this is Kiji. Kiji actually comes in older times. It comes all the way actually from Kyoto, where they started the pyramids. Now, of course, around the more urban areas, already the trail has disappeared really because, well, because of urbanization, right? But if you go to places like uh, Wakayama, you will still find the trails that are better preserved. So you can see here this line coming all the way from Kyoto, Osaka, goes down, we come to Wakayama, then we are right here, and you will see that it's divided here. 
This uh, line that goes around the coast, the Pacific Ocean really, is Ohechi. Then we have this one, Nakahechi, you see the, the one that you can see better, this one, that actually goes to the three main sites. It is one of, it's still one of the most uh, used uh, trails. And then you will see here Kumano Kohechi route. It goes to Koyas. And so you can see that Kumano Koyas and Koyas are not only in the same area, but they're also connected, right? Very interesting how these sites are connected uh, in Japan. And then, we, like we mentioned, we have the Ominio Kugaki Michi, the Ominio Kugachi Trail that goes to the more mountainous area of Nara. Uh, this is more a site of uh, mountain ascetism. That we, well, we, sadly, we don't have much time to talk today, but it goes to other, also sacred sites. And the Iseji route, the, the name says, it goes all the way to the Iseji Grand Shrine. Uh, perhaps you heard about the very famous uh, Shinto Shrine in Mie Prefecture, right? Where we have enshrined uh, Amaterasu, the sun goddess. So if you go all the way with Iseji, you, can, you will eventually reach um, uh, the Ise Shrine, right? So you can see here, it's a very big uh, site. Many sites are also, and also it has other smaller sites inside that again, sadly we don't have enough time to show all of them, just, you know, the, the main ones, the general ones. So you can see that this site, like I mentioned before, they are associated with Buddhism on one hand, and also on Shugendo, they is more called mountain ascetism, right? So you will see here this mixture of uh, faints in uh, Kumano Kodo. So we know, like I mentioned before, these are some of the pictures of the Grandsha. We have the Kumano Hongtaisha, the Kumano Nachitaisha, and the Kumano uh, Hayatama Taisha. They're all located in different towns inside Wakayama Prefecture. And they're also all uh, UNESCO heritage sites. And before the building, this tend to ask, you know, for divine favors, cruel illnesses, etc., etc., from the Kumano deities. Now, like I said before, really, we don't know exactly how old is Kumano Kodo. Technically, if you see some of the books, uh, there is evidence that it goes very, very uh, back in history. We don't know exactly how old this is. But if we uh, we can say that around the Nara era, that you can see here from the 8th century of common era, it, there is already evidence that the place was a site for religious practices in the mountain, right? So people go inside the mountains to do different types of religious uh, practices. In the Heian era, you can see here uh, around the 8th century to the 12th century, we have the first known ascetic going to the mountain called Emperor Ruda uh, to do the pyramid from Kyoto. Again, you know, remember the Kichi route all the way going from uh, Kyoto to here. It took around three months at that time to do the whole trip. And other, of course, other aristocrats uh, follow his example. What's interesting here is actually that Kumano Kodo could be visited by women. Other secret sites in Japan before, not now, but before, technically could, couldn't be visited by women. Later on in the Kamakura period, the military class from the regional areas started also to visit uh, Kumano. And later in uh, the Muromachi era, the whole, you say, the common people also started to visit uh, Kumano Kodo in what was called uh, the Ari no Kumano Mode, because they said that if you look at from afar, the lines of pilgrims going all the way to the Taisha could seem like a line of ants, right? You can see a line of ants, very long, very stretching all the way. These were the pilgrims walking to uh, Kumano Hongu Taisha and the other Taisha of the world. However, in the Edo period, we have here from the 17th to the 19th century, uh, Kumara started to lose his position as other pyramids also started to prosper, like the Shikoku Henro, Sekoku, and Ise uh, Shrine. And later on in the Meiji era, due to some government policies that the Meiji government took, such as the Kami and Buddha separation order of 1868, and the following prohibition of Shugendo order in 1872, contributed to the decline because, well, the faint of Kum uh, Kumano Kodo was based again in emerge of Kami and uh, of Shinto gods, Kami, and Buddha, um, Buddhas, and also this uh, Shugendo Monte Fen that I mentioned before, right? So due to these uh, decisions that the government took, this edict that the government took, well, this also affected Kumano Kodo in the modern era. You can see here some other of the pictures. We have Diamond Saka here. It's a 60 meter cloverstone uh, stair slope, which runs from the base uh, of the valley to Kumano Nachitaisha, Seigantoji Temple, and Nachi Waterfall. And here on the right, you have Nachi, actually, Nachi uh, is a famous 133 meters waterfall near Nachi, Taisha, and the Segantoji Buddhist Temple. 
And you can see that the Seigandoji temple also has this iconic three-story pagoda, right? It's part of the Seigandoji uh, temple complex. Also, of course, the waterfall has, it has been a place of religious rituals for, since uh, ancient times, right? Not only an aesthetic point, it also has a religious significance. So we know going back to uh, what we talk about, uh, I think you, you saw in previous class about tourism development. So what is the tourism development? What is the, uh, the importance of Kumano Kodo for regional tourism in Wakayama and also in the Kansai region, right? Because Kumano Kodo is not only important for Wakayama, but also for Kansai. So we know uh, that, that we mentioned before, we are in, after the Meiji period, we are kind of in a state of decline with Kumano Kodo, right? Things are not looking very good, but uh, in the 30s, in 1930s, the Kumano area started suffering from the population decrease and a low point in the forestry industry. This is very common in other rural areas in Japan and really in the world, right? How many times we have been hearing about rural revitalization in tourism studies? So they had, the community had the idea to try to revitalize the area, the economy of the area using tourism, right? And here they tried to, to use it through a national park that was designated in 36, the Yoshino Kumano National Park, but it also includes Kumano. So they tried to say, okay, can we perhaps promote tourism using the national park? However, you can imagine later on we have the Second World War and well, tourism, I, <laughs> tourism wasn't really the priority at this time. So after the war, in the 50s and 60s, they tried again to uh, promote Kumano Kodo using the, Kuma the Yoshino Kumano National Park, but other coastal areas in Japan were really the main tourist impost spots at this time, especially in the Kipe Peninsula, like Shirahama and other many, there are many uh, uh, beaches and places for coastal tourism in Wakayama really. But later in the 70s, the domestic tourism uh, needs became more diverse. People wanted to go to new places. They wanted to have new experiences. So again, Kumano Kodo here became a candidate for becoming a tourism destination. So. From the 70s to the 2000s, so you can imagine this took a long, long time, 30 years of work. Repair works and cultural designation by the Japanese government who started to research and repair and categorize uh, many parts of the Kumano Kodo. Like so Kumano Kodo is very big, so this took a lot of time. And there was here an emphasis from the cultural to the from the sorry from the natural to the cultural resources, right? Before they tried to promote uh, Kumano Kodo as a natural area, but now there was a change in policy and they wanted to promote Kumano Kodo through its cultural resources and the cultural resources is the pilgrimage of the Kumano Kodo, right? And later on in 2004, it was designated as a World Heritage Site, the second site and pilgrimage routes in the key mountain range that includes not only Kumano Kodo, but other sites like Koya San Right? One another, uh, another important uh, tourism resource and it's also part of the culture and the history of Wakayama are the onsen. Maybe you heard about, uh, I think you heard about the already the onsen really, uh, very famous, you know, in, in Japan, a very uh, big tradition here. And Kumano Kodo has many onsen, or really the whole Kipe Peninsula has many onsen. And because of the geography, they are usually located inside uh, scenic mountain spots. Not all of them, but most of them. Now the onsen nowadays we use them as a place for you know leisure relaxation, but actually the onsen had a religious meaning uh, before. As the pilgrims when they finish in their uh, you know the trips, the travels, they bathed in the waters uh, uh, as a way of purification and do different rituals, right? So you can see here that the onsen are not really only about leisure, but also they have a religious and a cultural uh, significance. Now we have many onsen uh, here, just going to introduce briefly the main of them. So where you have a Yuno Mine Onsen, there's a small collection of onsen inns located in a valley that is very near the Hongo uh, Taisha, one of the grand shrines, right? It's considered one of the oldest onsen that we have here in Japan with a history of around 1,800 years. So this is a very, very old site. And also you can see how old Kumano Kodo is. It is uh, dates, right? You can see here a picture, it's a very small picture here, and you can see that it, it's like a very small village inside a valley, very small inside the, the valley, and in, in, at the center you can see the, the onsen, the hot spring really, uh, like a small river passing through the town. 
Now here, in Unomine, you have uh, a very small one that is called Tsuono you can see here, it's registered as a UNESCO property and known for its legendary healing properties, right? It's a very small, it's like a very small house, almost a cabin, you would call it. I think that perhaps one or two people can fit. And really you go here in turns, right? So you have like around 15, 20 minutes, and then the next uh, visitor goes because it's very small, really. You cannot fit many people. And if you also, what is interesting here, the Tsubo no Yu, and you know, Mini, you can also try onsen boilers. So you have, they have like uh, bags of eggs that they sell, and they just uh, put them in the onsen. They cook there, and they, they just uh, eat them like that. Another imp important onsen here in Wakayama is Kawayo, Kawayu Onsen. There's a small onsen area near the Otogawa uh, River. And what is interesting here in this onsen is that the visitors can dig their own bats in the river, right? So you can just try to dig your own bat, really, and have your own like private space. This is outside, even, right? It's like a small, it's a big river, so people usually go with the swims, as you can imagine. And it's famous for its Seninbure, that is a large open bat created in the river bank during December, February. You can see a picture here, like because the whole river becomes like a giant onsen, right? Another important onsen is the Ryujin Onsen, it's located in Hitakawa uh, River in the mountainous area more inside uh, in the north, around the north of Mongotaisha. That was used as a resort area by the uh, Tokugawa uh, shoguns during the Edo area. And due to its be uh, skin benefits, it's known as one of the Japan three beautiful women, also the Bijin no Yu, because they are good for the, the skin, right? So you can see here a picture of the Ryujin Onsen. And finally, you have Katsura Onsen. It's located more in the southeast coast of the Key Peninsula, right? So this is more in the coast, not in the mountains. So it's a bit different from the other one we saw. And uh, most of the onsen in uh, Katsura are uh, inside accommodation, are different hotels or ryokans. But you can also uh, use them if you are not staying in the hotel or in the ryokan, just pay a fee and you stay for the day, really, right? And the most representative one is the in Hotel Urashima that is inside a cave, really. So the, the, the hotel is over like a large, it was a mountain or rock, very large, very, very large. And the, inside there you have a cave. So the, inside the cave is the, the onsen that you can see also the Pacific Ocean, right? From the cave, from the very, very, very nice. And also it's a very different experience because as you know, most onsen are actually located in mountains, right? So this is located in the coastal area. You can see here uh, a picture of Katsura so it's a very different uh, experience. Also, we have uh, here in Wakayama, in, in the area of Kumano Kodo, the Torokyo Gorg, that is designated as one of Japan's special natural monuments of scenic beauty, and they are being located in the headquarters of Kitayama River. It's beloved as a tourist attraction with great uh, natural beauty. You can see here a picture, and you can also take like a small a boat to go around the Dorokyo, right? Very scenic spot. And what's interesting here is that you cannot only do a sightseeing, but you also have some uh, outdoor activities that are based on traditional culture, again, of uh, Wakayama. And this is called a log rafting. So traditionally, uh, this area in Wakayama, most of the areas in Wakayama had a very large forest industry, like we said before, right? At this time, in, you can imagine when we didn't have a modern transport, they had to transport the logs somewhere, right? So what they did, they floated down the rivers, connected as raft, right? They go through, they connected it as raft, and they basically throw the logs through the river, uh, like some kind of uh, adventure tourism experience, right? You can still do this, uh, even though you know the forestry industry now. Of course, doesn't use this uh, anymore. It's not necessary anymore, right? So I'm going to try to play here with a video so you can have an idea of how uh, this looks like. If you're interested, so you can see how, for example, the, these traditional cultures of log rafting, of traditional economies in uh, Wakayama, they continue to evolve and have new meanings and new uses still in contemporary society, right? So you can see here, how the log rafting uh, works. This is again, this is based on a traditional economic activity in forestry on how to move the logs. And this tradition still continues to evolve nowadays as a service for a business experience for visitors, really, right? So you can see here how they go down the 
Toro Kyo Gore, right? So this is how the, all this, uh, this culture, you know, continue to evolve across time and having different uh, uses and meanings for the local community and also for the visitors. Another thing that uh, uh, there are many examples in Wakayama is matris, right? I think they also hear about matris. They are usually translated as festivals in English. Usually you will see that matris are called festivals. And you can see here that it's like an exchange between the gods, the kami, and the ancestors, or the ancestors, depending on the matsuri and humans, right? So it's a gathering, you will say, an inter interchange between kami or ancestors, depending, and humans. Usually, these matsuri are done to ask for divine favors, express gratitude, or comfort the dead. Again, this depends on the matsuri. And they usually involve dances, music, processions, prayer, celebration, different types of celebration as offerings to the God, right? So all these dances, all this music that you see in the matrix are also an offer uh, to the gods, right? It's not just, you know, it's just, just have fun, right? I mean, they have fun, of course, it's very, it's interesting to participate in the matrix, but it's not only about the fun, it also has a, an additional meaning, a cultural meaning here. And some of these uh, dances and celebration include traditional Kagura music and also lion dances, right? You also see them display in mass rest. Now, because of its ancient history and tradition, Wakayama has many uh, matsuri still uh, are still being performed. One of them is the Waka matsuri that takes place in Wakayama City. I have seen also personally uh, many times. We also have the Awajima Shrine Doll Matsuri. In, also this in Wakayama City, but more in the coastal area in Wakayama City, right? Uh, so they, uh, they, it's a very interesting shrine that has many dolls, many, many, many dolls, and they put the dolls in a boat, and then they, uh, they take them to the ocean, right? It has uh, some meaning related to the expiation of, you know, different, uh, and you will say in English sins, but not really sins, like different faults of the society or the community they are put in the dolls, and then the dolls take these uh, problems away from the community, right? And finally, you have the Otomatsuri, that is the one I'm going to explain now. This takes place in Shingo City. Shingo City is in a very uh, southern point uh, in Wakayama, Wakayama Prefecture. So you can see here the Otomatsuri. Uh, it's held every year at uh, Shingo City on February 6th. And here, all men who are the ones who participate in the Matsuri uh, dressing in uh, white robes with a stick, uh, straw rope wrap around their waist. And during the matsuri, the participants know there are no as noriko, the participants are called noriko. They purify themselves by eating white food only and doing purifying rituals in the ocean called shiogori. Later, they gather up on a steep rock uh, staircase because the sacred Gotobika rock located beside the Kamikura shrine. You can see here, this is Kamikura shrine. And you can see here the Gotobika rock. I'm going to explain this a bit later, just I want to wrap up the idea here with the automatory. So at night, carrying a torch, each, the, the Noriko, the participant, they rush down through this very, very steep. The staircase, I climb it, it's very steep. It's really steep. So they rush down this steep carrying at night and they create, if you see from a different distance, it looks like a fire dragon descending from the mountain, right? Because, because it's a line and they are descending very fast. It almost looks like a dragon you can see here the peaks, like the fire dragon descending from the shrine all the way down to the to the city. You can see here uh, a picture here of how it looks like. See if we can uh, show this short. Uh, you see here you have the Goto Ibika Iwa rock and the Kamikura Jinja. Uh, ah, okay. Just wait a second, we are putting here the technical. <laughs> yeah, we are putting here the technical part. Okay, thank you. Okay. Let me see if I can play it right. There it is. Okay. So there is the Gotobiki Iwa Rock. 
with the Kamikura ginger. They show here the staircase is very, very steep. I, when I went there, I was surprised how the local community could climb the staircase very easily because it's really steep. It almost looks like rock climbing. Right? And then the Noriko with the torches. You see there, the front line looks a little bit better. And this part is very, very steep. And very, very quickly the ceiling down the stairs. So you, you can see a bit there of the staircase, so you can see that. This. So you can see that uh, Wakayama still has many of these uh, traditions, these um, rituals collected to the local communities and also the tourism development nowadays in the prefecture. And just a very short explanation of Kamikura Jinja and Gotobi Kaiwa. I mentioned the, the automatory, the participants from the automatory descend from the shrine all the way down from the staircase, right? So the shrine, like I said before, is called Kamikura uh, Shrine. We have a picture here and then you have the Gotobi, uh, Gotobi Kiwa rock. It's very big rock here, very, very big. And according to the legend, the gods of Kumano descended to this giant rock, the Gotobi Kiwa, which serves as an object of worship in the shrine. And also the stairs are known to be uh, very steep, like I said before. You can see here a picture of the stairs case. You can see that it's a very, uh, very, very steep and difficult climb and descent also. It's a very difficult descent. So moving on uh, with Koyasa, right? We talk about uh, Kumanoko, of course, there's many more things to talk about Kumanoko, but again, we only have one hour, so we have to just uh, touch on of the main points only. So moving on to Koyasa. Now Koyasa is also, like I said before, located in Wakayama. Again, we go back to our map. You see here, this is the Kansa region, and this is the Wakayama uh, prefecture in the, in the Iki Peninsula, right? So you see here, Inside the circle, you say, where is Koyasan, or it's technically called Koya Town, if you want. We are going to refer to it as Koyasan, but it's called Koya Town uh, inside the prefecture, right? It's the same place, really. So you see again, Osaka, Naramie, Wakayama City is here, also where is the university. And very close to here, we have uh, Koyasan. Now, Koyasan is more in a mountainous area, right? So. You will see here that uh, Koyasan is a Buddhist complex located in Mount Koya, Wakayama Prefecture, was uh, founded by a very well-known uh, Buddhist monk, Japanese Buddhist monk called Kukai in the ninth century. Here we have a portrait of Kukai who brought a Shingon Buddhism, or it's a branch of Buddhism from China, brought it back to uh, Japan, right? And nowadays, Koyasan is also the seat of Kongo Buchi. You have here the, also the name in Japanese, Kongo Buchi is the headquarters of Koyasan uh, Shingon Buddhism that is recognized by over 3,700 temples in Japan and 10,000 temples worldwide. It's a very uh, famous center of uh, Buddhism and also Buddhism studies as well. So what is Shingon Buddhism? I mean, maybe you heard uh, about Zen Buddhism probably. Uh, as you know, in Buddhism, like in also many other religions, there are many branches, you will say, of different schools, right? So Shingon Buddhism is one of these branches or schools of Buddhism that we have, right? Other branches, like I said, include also Zen Buddhism, Jodo Buddhism, Nichiren Buddhism, and Tenda Buddhism, right? These are different schools. They are, honestly, they have many common points, really, uh, on their basis, but some of the approaches, some of the rituals, some of the traditions are uh, different but they still share a common Buddhism core, right? So uh, Shingon Buddhism was brought to Japan uh, from China by Kuka, like I said before, in the ninth century. And then he founded Koyasan as a place for teaching uh, Shingon Buddhism. He brought this teaching uh, from China. And uh, by taking it to Japan, he wanted to establish a center for teaching Shingon Buddhism. And well, for this, he founded uh, Koyasan, 
Again, this was very common at this time. Uh, Japan uh, had many, uh, you would say, missions or exchange students to uh, study trip to China, bringing different arts, uh, craftsmanship, and also traditional uh, religions like here, like Shingon Buddhism. Now, Shingon Buddhism has an emphasis on oral teachings between the master and the disciples. This makes it sometimes a bit complicated to study because there are many things that are not written. Yeah, they have oral traditions. And some of the rituals include this Goma fire ritual that you have here uh, a picture, and the Ajika meditation that is a meditation in front of the Sanskrit uh, letter A. That is a, like a small banner, it looks like a banner, very small banner. So the Buddhists, uh, the monks sit in front of this banner to meditate. You see here uh, in the picture uh, here, you can see oh, here the Ajikan banner, very small here. This is the A, uh, the Ajik. The Ajika meditation. So Koyasan, uh, well, Koyatan, what we said before, is uh, in, at the end of the 19th century, the major government merged the Koyasan uh, Buddhism complex and nearby villages into Koya village. And later in 1988, the Koyatan was formed to merge it, right? So what we know as Koyatan really is Koyasan, the Buddhist complex Koyasan, plus some very small uh, communities uh, that were merged together. It has a population of around 3,000 people, so you can imagine it's a very small uh, community in the mountains. 60% is located about 600 meters, so it's really over a mountain, technically it's literally over a mountain. And some of the traditional uh, activities included uh, forestry and farming, but like in many rural areas, these are in decline. And we now have a growing service sector, which is really tourism. And this is also because uh, many of the Buddhist institutions have been deprived of their traditional financial support from the government and the land state. In pre-modern times, uh, the Japanese government, the emperor or the shogun, depending who, actually gave money to the temples to support them financially. And also the temples have their own lands to obtain money from. This was, doesn't exist anymore, of course, in modern times. So, well, the temples have to go to other uh, sources of uh, support, finance support, and one of them well, is uh, tourism. In 2004, it was, uh, like I said before, described as, uh, as part of the sacred site and pyramid route in the key mountain range in the UNESCO heritage site, like Komano And also, finally, Komano uh, Koyasan has a, a university, has Koyasan University, that is a private university dedicated to Buddhism. It's a small university, but it's very important in Buddhism studies. It's a very specific. Uh, uh, area of study, but it's very important in that. One of the main attractions, one of the main uh, reasons for why people go to Koyasan is actually to try to stay in the temple. You can stay and sleep in the temple if you want. This is called a Shukubo. Now, the, the origin of Shukubo go from the uh, 14th century. At this time, the temple started to build protected affiliations with influential warrior clans in Japan. And in these uh, relationships, the temple obtained political and financial support, and they provide religious and accommodation services to these uh, clans, right? So, like I said before, this ended when the Meiji government just decided to stop this patronage. So the temples said, okay, we cannot uh, receive these warriors, these clans anymore. We are going to open our doors to everybody who is interested in staying. And nowadays, many temples offer accommodation service to guests, including international ones. And the guests can also participate in sutra coping and the Goma fire ceremony that we saw also the Ajikan uh, meditation. And also they can taste uh, Buddhist cuisine, right? So you can see here some of the uh, different Shukubo temples that are in Koyasan. Here we have a Koin temple, Fukuchin temple, Fudoin temple, Yusein, Fugenin, these are all uh, Shukubo where a visitor can stay uh, the night and do all these different experiences. Regarding Buddhist cuisine, uh, it's called Shoshin Ryo in Japanese. So Buddhist cuisine basically follows certain monastic rules of what you can eat or you cannot eat, right? So first of all, the most basic rule is it doesn't have to include animals. It is basically big and full, right? It doesn't include animals, animal products. It also avoids strong and spicy ingredients to maintain a calm, calm mind. So, for example, no garlic here. And this tradition was also brought from China, 
from Chinese Buddhism to uh, Japan during the Heian period. And what's interesting is that George in this uh, term that we call like Buddhist cuisine, is Georgian, is actually a Sanskrit word that called uh, is Virya. Virya is one of the virtues in Buddhism and can be translated in English as a energy for engaging in virtuous acts, right? Virtuous acts are many things, it's not only not eating animals, there are many, many uh, good things that you can do if you, are, if you are inclined to. So this period is this energy, diligent energy to do, uh, go to the virtuous acts. And in Buddhism, this can be also translated as, again, not consuming animals, right? So this is why it's called Shojin Ryori in uh, Japanese. Now, Shojin Ryori, as you can see here in the picture, is not only one <coughs> dish, there are many dishes, uh, and they are actually, they taste pretty well, despite not having many strong or spicy ingredients and not having meat, actually, they have a very wide range uh, of flavors. And some of the common dishes include vegetable tempura, boiled vegetables, gam modoki that is made with to uh, fried tofu, mice with vegetables, and goma tofu that is made with sesame, kutsu seed, and uh, water, right? So you can see that despite being, uh, having some, uh, restrictions regarding its ingredients is actually a very range of different dishes of different flavors also, right? And here we have Kongobuchi. Like I said before, Kongobuchi, the head temple of Koya, uh, Koya Shingon Buddhism is actually an amalgamation of two Buddhist temples, Seiganji and Kosanji, that were merged during the Meiji period. And Interestingly enough, previously the whole area of Koyasan was actually called Congo Buji, right? Because the temple was so important. Now you can still, uh, Congo Buji still works as a functions as a very, very large uh, Buddhist temple and still has monks, of course. And also houses a vast collection of national treasures, important cultural properties, and historical documents. And you can still uh, visit uh, Congo Buji. You can go around inside Congo Buji. It's a very, very large place. It also offers experiences to visitors such as Ajika meditation, Sutra Kopin, uh, and Ikebana, just, you know, uh, Japanese uh, cultural practices and experiences. Here are some of the pictures uh, from inside uh, Congo Buche. You can see that really the whole area is like a big art gallery or a museum. Also inside Congo Buche, you have Man Yute, which is one of the most famous rock girls in Japan. You can see here a picture on the right. But really the whole uh, visiting the, the temple is a very interesting, very unique experience because it's, it has many, many works of art inside. Really the, whole, the, the temple itself is a work of art. Another important part in Koya San is the Dan Jogaran. Now the Dan Jogaran is not really one uh, building, it's an area, it's like an area, right? So the Dan Jogaran is an area that has many religious buildings inside, right? The objective of the Danjo Garden is a place for the monks to train and do a different rituals, right? It's a ritual area. The construction of the Danjo Garden uh, began with Kobodashi. It took us so many years to finish because, again, there are many, many uh, buildings here. And it's also a symbolic construction because it's located at the center of Koyasan and it's also surrounded by eight mountains, right? So the Danjo Garden is really the center of Koyasan. Interestingly enough, Congo Buchi is not the center of Koyasan. The Danjo Garden is the center. And inside the Danjo Garden, in the center of the Danjo Garden, is the Great Pagoda. You can see here on the right, the Kompondaito. This is the center of Koyasan, really. It was originally built in the 19th century. As you know, many of these uh, buildings are made of wood and well, they tend to catch fire every now and then. So the present building was built in 1937. And it enshrines uh, the cosmic Buddha called Dainichi Niyore, right? That is really the centerpiece of Koizan. All important buildings here, we have the Miedo, that is the place for daily prayer and meditation of Kobodaishi. The Fudomio, that is an original building from the Heian period, and the West Pagoda. Again, there are also many other uh, buildings here. We don't have really time to explain all of them, but just remember that the, the Danjo Garden is the center of uh, Koyasan, the place where the monks train. Here you can see some pictures. This is inside the compound. Let me see if I can move my, myself. 
here. This is more myself, yeah. So <clears throat> you can see that uh, here on the left, you have a picture of that is Dainichi Niura, the study of Dainichi Niura is very huge, very huge study. And it's surrounded by associated Buddha. You can see them here painted in the columns, right? In front of the compound daito, you have the daito bell that faces the compound daito pagoda. You see, you have a picture here. It sounds every day at 4 a.m., 1 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m., and 11 p.m. to mark the days, date of the day. Here we have the needle, the original study hall, the praying site of a kukai. And because of the importance of kukai himself, this also became an object of worship. And then we have the Mia Shiro, the Shinto shrine. This is interesting. So we are in a Buddhist complex, but we have a Shinto shrine. That way we have here a Shinto shrine. It's really the only one we have now. It was because, uh, like you know, in Japan, mountains, rivers, and different uh, geographical places have gods. They are inhabited by gods, right? They are not only physical objects. So the, before Koyasan became a Buddhist site, it was called Miyashiroyama, right? It was the same place with a different name, Miyashiroyama. Now in Miyashiroyama, like many mountains in Japan, also had its own gods living and guarding the place. So when Kukai went to uh, establish Koyasan, he also obtained the permission, according to tradition, of these gods of Miyashiroyama. Right, and because after he obtained the, their permission to build a koyasan, the gods of the mountain and enshrined here, right, in Miyashiro Jinja. You can see here how these different traditions, Shinto, Buddhism, merging together here in Wakayama. Finally, we have the Okunoin. Okunoin is a, another very interesting centerpiece in a koyasan. Okuni is actually a two kilometer cemetery that is built, and that ends, sorry, it ends with the Kobo Daishi, with Kukai's mausoleum, the Gobyo. Now, according to tradition, uh, Kukai actually never died, but is in a eternal meditation in the mausoleum. Um, of course, nobody can have access to uh, Kobodaishi, except the highest ranking uh, monks in Kongobuchi, right? The area is also covered with tall trees that give it a unique atmosphere. You can see here a picture of Okunai. You can see here the way, different tombs at the, at the side and the very huge trees uh, covering the place. And the monks continue to carry food to the underground chamber where Kobodaishi uh, is. Again, this is not, of course, open to the public, but you will see the monks taking food to Kobodaishi uh, every day. I also heard that they change his clothes, they cut his nails, cut him hair uh, in the mausoleum. This, because this is also a cemetery, there are also many other uh, historical fields that are uh, in uh, resting here in Okuno, including uh, different daimyos, warriors. And there are also night tours offered as well to appreciate the place in a different atmosphere, right? I personally think that it's very interesting to go to Okunoin when it's a, a, either raining or it's a bit misty because uh, Koyasan is in the mountain, usually before or after a rain gets very misty the area, right? There is a lot of humidity. Uh, so the place gets very misty and it gets a very interesting atmosphere if you want to go to Okunoin. It's one of the places that you can go with rain instead of sunshine. It's very interesting. Not many places are like that. And here we have a, a small diagram of the mausoleum. Right? So let me see. Yeah. So you can see here the mausoleum and a diagram of the mausoleum. I'm going to explain, try to explain this very uh, easily. This big building here is called the Lantern Hall. Fill again with lanterns in remembrance of the dead. Right? Again, this is a, in the cemetery. And here you can see where people uh, pray to uh, Kobodaishi. Here you have the mausoleum. Let me see if I can find my arrow. Here is the mausoleum. Now, the mausoleum, and you can see it here in this picture, is above ground. Right? Now, the real mausoleum where Kobodaishi is 
It's underground, it's not that. This is where they go to take the food, right? You can see here, so this is the mausoleum. They have a statue of Kobodaisi here, but the real Kobodaisi is actually underground. Of course, you cannot access either of them. You can only go until here. You can see the, the person, like a small picture of a person here. This is until where most people can go. The highest ranking monks can enter these places. It's not, of course, open to visitors. And also you can go underground to pray in front of Kobo Daisi in a way, right? Of course, there is a wall between and there is a picture, like a portrait of Kobo Daisi, right? Behind that wall is the actual resting place of Kobo Daisi, or the place where he is in, he's in internal meditation, depending on what you believe. Right? And you can see here uh, some of the other interesting uh, sites in Okunai. Like I said before, uh, Okunai is a very big, two kilometers uh, cemetery, very, very big. So there are many uh, historical figures uh, resting here. You have Toyotomi Hideyoshi, you have also Oda Nobunaga resting here. And you can see here a picture of the monks taking food to uh, Kobodashi, taking this palanquin, and then they enter the mausoleum. And this is a picture of the Landor Hall that I showed you before. The Landor Hall is this one, this big building here, just before the Gobio, just before the mausoleum. And you, like the, the name says, is lit with around 1,000 uh, lanterns in the memories of, uh, well, the deceased, the ancestors, the people who passed away. And finally, just uh, so you can see some of the in other interesting sites in uh, Koyasan. And how still Koyasan is relevant, not only with this century old tradition, but still nowadays, that many uh, companies, Japanese companies, have uh, company tombs. Uh, inside uh, Koyasan, I was very surprised the first time I saw the rocket inside uh, Okunoi because I was thinking, okay, I don't understand exactly why there is a rocket inside the, uh, the cemetery, right? It's a bit strange to see a rocket inside the cemetery, but actually the rocket is one of these uh, company tombs, right? The, the rocket, you can see it here, the third picture is Shimayo, Shimeiwa Industries has the rocket, right? So you will, you go in Okunoi, you will see the, the rocket, very interesting sight to see. But also other corporations have their own uh, company tombs, have UCC Corporation here, next COVID, Yakult Corporation, you hear about it, makes uh, yogurt, Shimawa Industries. And also Panasonic has its own, uh, Panasonic Corporation, make electronics, also has its own uh, company tomb, right? So you can see how, uh, Okunoin and Koyasan really still uh, relevant not for uh, contemporary society as a resting place, right? I know that for, perhaps you see this from another culture, it sounds a bit strange that you have a company tomb because there is actually resting, people resting here, right? This is not a monument, or they are resting here. I think that actually the founder of Panasonic is in Okunoin, uh, right? So, and I guess that probably many higher executives who have uh, their companies are also uh, resting here, right? So it's a very interesting sight to see in uh, in Okunoin, in Koyasan. I think we have around uh, 10, five minutes, right? 10, five minutes. So I don't know if you have any questions or comments, you can feel free to put them in the chat and I will try to uh, answer your question. Let me see if I can open it here the chat. Someone wants to eat, very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Please see. This important. The nutrition is very important for the human body. Uh, very uh, beautiful ma ma mausoleum. Yeah, it's very, very, uh, very, very nice. Uh, again, this is what is interesting in both in Komanokodo and in Koyasan that you can see how both the culture and nature in the world in a way merge together. You know, there is not a clear uh, separation between uh, nature and culture in these uh, type of traditional areas. Can tourists access the cemetery besides uh, the night or yes, you can ask, access it during the day. Uh, it's free actually, you just go, you go inside the, the cemetery. Um, the cemetery again is very big. You have like two main pathways that go all the way to the mausoleum, uh, but you can also go like very small like side uh, trails inside, right? You can also access at night. At, at night, it's better also usually to go with a tour because, well, 
it's at night and it's a bit dark, right? Uh, but yeah, it's open. It's open. Uh, the compound diet is open. The Danjo Gar is open. Uh, Congo Buji is open. Nice. It looks very atmospheric. Yeah, I think it's a very atmospheric place. It's a very different experience from going to, for example, Kyoto. In Kyoto, you, of course, you also have very, uh, very important uh, temples in Kyoto. But the atmosphere is a bit different because, well, it's inside a big city, right? Uh, you lose some of the atmosphere of the context when going to uh, temples in Kyoto in comparison to going to, for example, like Kumarokodo or Koyas. And I think it's a, it's a different uh, experience. And also, I think that's why uh, Wakayama has a very unique place in the Kansai region, right? In comparison to Osaka and Kyoto. Yes, Osaka and Kyoto are, of course, uh, bigger. Of course, they're bigger, but uh, they don't have the same atmosphere, really. And, and the culture is a bit different, right? Because you, here you have more traditional, uh, regional uh, culture in comparison to these uh, bigger places. Do we have another uh, question here? I think then, uh, without the questions, I will just want to briefly remind you that uh, tomorrow we have a, a session, it says right here in the, in the chat, that we have a session with Dr. Husna, Dr. Jota, and me. We have a session tomorrow that is about life in Japan. So if you have any question or topic, it doesn't have to be specific about Wakayama. It can be about Waka life in Wakayama, life in Japan in general, Japanese culture, Japanese language, how is to open a bank account, what rules are in the onsen, uh, food, anything really, any type of service, daily life you know, situations or problems that you may have, uh, really any, anything uh, feel free to to include them here in the in the form and then uh, tomorrow well, we will go through through them uh, I've been living here in in Japan for around almost 10 years so uh, maybe I have seen some of the situations that you will uh, be asking so please uh, yeah feel free to to include them it says the link for the form isn't working for me. Okay, let's we'll check if the link form uh, is working. Uh, hopefully, we can see that. But yeah, any any question that you have really uh, it doesn't have to be about only Wakayama, the Kansai region, studying in Japan, living in Japan, uh, working in Japan. Anything really that you have, you can try to to have any. You'll really because you know living in another. Uh, country is a bit uh, challenging, of course. Um, so any question that you have really just uh, feel free to include in the in the form. Yeah, that, there it is, the survey for life in Japan tomorrow, that's the, that's the form. Okay, I think we are reaching the, our time, right? Okay, so without further ado, I think we are uh, then closing the session for today. Again, uh, thank you very much for participating. I hope it was of interest uh, ah, the link is good now. Okay, fantastic. So, well, I hope it was for of interest for of you. If you have never heard about uh, Komano Kodo or Koyasan, I, hopefully, uh, it will be. It has been an interesting, uh, very short presentation, really, uh, for you. And then, well, I will see you uh, tomorrow in the Life of Japan session. Again, thank you very much. <laughs>